concept of government. And um, we define government. We also told you the different parts of government. And then we moved on from there to origins of government. You first have to have a people. From a people, um, society is formed. And with the formation of society arises uh, conflicts, interest, that leading to search for solutions to those conflicts and problems. And that's how the need for state arises. So the state as um, an entity is now created. And what the state is created, the state needs an instrument. State operates its government. So we said all that. So today, let's look at uh, how government is different from other social organizations. There are all kinds of social organizations. You have religious organizations, you have clubs, you have um, unions, <laughs> trade unions, and so on and so forth. These are different social organizations. And they are different from government. They are not the same thing as government. So we are going to discuss five things that make government different from other social organizations. If you like five things that distinguish government from other social organizations. I've given you examples of social organizations. Even students union, the kind of social organization uh, which you probably not belong or you belong later by virtue of uh, being a student of the University of Ibadan, you are likely to, uh, to, to belong to this uh, group sooner or later. So it's a social organization and you belong to one religious group or the other. That's also, that's also a social organization. Now, the first thing that makes government different from other social organizations is that government enjoys comprehensive authority. Government enjoys comprehensive authority. Can you get that? Yes, sir. Authority. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Yeah. Government enjoys comprehensive authority. And now, what do we mean? Yes, sir. The different social organizations uh, mm -hmm. make rules for members. Some of them charge some levies or require members to pay dues. I thought I muted everybody earlier. So why why the noise again? Mm -hmm. Different from other kinds of, uh, I mean, all types of social organizations, different from all types of social organizations. And I gave examples of social organizations. Students' Union is one type, a religious group is another type, a trade union is another type. You can think of others around Bio. you, separate from government. Now I said the first thing that makes government or that distinguishes government from other social organizations is that government enjoys comprehensive authority, distinguished first and foremost from other kinds of social organizations because government enjoys 
comprehensive authority. What do we mean? Every social organization makes rules for members. And those rules are expected to be obeyed by members. But those rules may or do not apply to those who are not members. For example, um, there was a time before the introduction of uh, general studies courses, GS. I'm sure when you were registering, you were expected to register for some general studies courses like uh, GS 101, GS 105, which is um, a course in agriculture, a basic course in agriculture. Now, some universities started uh, to offer GS courses, not before Ibadan. So let's say, for example, if uh, Musuka, University of Nigeria, Musuka, um, required students to take GS courses, if University of Unsuka then requires students to take GS courses, that will not be binding, that will, will not be binding on University of Ibadan students. In that way, in Unsuka, we have to take those courses uh, to qualify for a degree, to earn a degree from Unsuka. Because the way those courses are offered is such that if you don't pass them, or if you don't have a minimum pass, you are not going to graduate. So when Uzuka started offering general studies courses, and Ibadan was not, that rule did not apply to Ibadan. In other words, you could graduate without those courses. That's what we are saying. That's an example of um, rules that are made by some other organizations, social organizations. So you can regard a university as a social organization. Rules are, by, are made by other organizations that do not apply or are not binding on uh, members of other social organizations. But government is different. Rules made by government are expected to be obeyed by all, irrespective of the social organization to which you belong. You are familiar with uh, BVN, that is a basic verification number. Um, before it was introduced by government, so you could uh, carry out banking transactions. Bank uh, banking transactions without a problem. But at some point, the federal government of Nigeria decided that every person should acquire a BVN number. So that rule was not uh, to be obeyed as a matter of choice. It was compulsory. Otherwise, they will uh, place an embargo on your account. You can't operate it. So everybody had to acquire that number if you want to do business with the bank. So that explains to you uh, what we are talking about, that government enjoys comprehensive authority, right? Another example, which is uh, recent, is uh, linking of your phone number to a national identity number. That was also a recent, that was a recent requirement of uh, the federal government of Nigeria. So if, if, if you don't, if your phone number is not linked to your NIN, that is national identification number, by 
a deadline issued by government, then you are not going to be able to operate your phone. So these examples illustrate um, the comprehensive nature of government authority. That is the first distinction between government and other social organizations. The second distinction is that uh, membership of a government is involuntary. Membership of government is involuntary. That is to say that membership of other social organizations is voluntary. So we gave examples of social organizations to which individuals can let me ask, am I clear to you now? Am I clear? No. Even a religious organization is a social organization. A student's union is a social organization. All organizations outside of government are social organizations. Membership of these organizations is voluntary. A club is a social organization. Now, why do we say membership of these organizations is voluntary. It's voluntary because you can decide to withdraw your membership, you can decide not to be a member again of these social organizations. Yes, but a government, membership of a government is not like that. When you are born, You are born into a society uh, under the authority of that government. You can't choose not to be a member of that government. Of course, government, in this case, enjoys um, the same jurisdiction with the state. Because every state has a government. And uh, every state you know, has a territorial jurisdiction. So you must belong to a state. The way the way world is organized so that nobody can choose not to belong to a state. Otherwise, you will be a stateless citizen if you are not a member of a state. And if you have to move from the state into which you were born, To another, to another, clear something from you. I guess you know what uh, uh, they require from you. We need a passport. We also need uh, uh, a visa. So uh, that passport carries the imprint of a state. For example, Nigeria, Ghana, US, and so on. So you must belong to a state. And you can belong to a state that is, by extension, belong to the jurisdiction of a government by birth. That is uh, talk, talking about citizenship by birth. Yes. Um, there are other ways of acquiring citizenship. Each state has soon other rules of acquiring citizenship. Maybe you have lived there for five years, or you have lived there for 10 years, and be found to be law-abiding, and you apply, and the state chooses to grant your application. And sometimes the, the state may require you to be able to speak its major language uh, 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 friendly, to use it, Friendly. So if you meet the requirements uh, stipulated by the state, then you can be granted citizenship of that state. And once you become a member, a citizen of a state, and then your membership becomes involuntary. That is insofar as you are within that state. You can renounce your citizenship, but what we are saying generally is that 
you can't decide, you know, every now and then. 